What's up? My name is Rob the Car Guy, and this is my Land Rover 2006 L322. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I went to go start this thing up for the first time in a few months because we just got back from the beach here in North Carolina. We were doing some sand driving, uh, camping out on the beach, fishing. It was awesome. But I went to go start it up a couple weeks ago, and uh, nothing. Turn the key, the key will not turn, the truck will not start and I have got the infamous steering column module failure. Now, if you are familiar with this, um, which you probably are, otherwise you wouldn't really even be watching this video, I don't know why you would, um, what happens is the steering column module in the Land Rover fails. When that happens, you cannot turn the key. The key will just click, 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 click. Um, you can pull fuse 18, you can take the steering column apart and disconnect the module, um, and when you plug it back in, you can start it one time. One time and that is it. And that is what a lot of these videos are for. But I'm going to show you how to bypass the steering column module permanently without having to replace it. Because if you buy one of these things, use their nine to twelve, fifteen hundred dollars give or take for a used steering column, or their thousands, I mean three, four, five thousand dollars to get a new one from Range Rover. And Mm, that just ain't in the budget. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I have figured out a way to permanently bypass the steering column module and um, wire it back in basically into the illumination module. So I'll show you how that works here. Plus added benefit, I also had the fortune of having my fail in the locked position. So bypassing the steering column module, pulling fuse 18, doing all these things um, was all well and good, but you still had the steering wheel locked. So first we've got to disable the steering lock. I'll put the link in the comments if you want to skip right to that. And then I'll show you how to permanently disable the steering column module. I've been driving this thing for a couple of weeks now with no side effects whatsoever. So I think this is a permanent way to fix this without having to um, pull fuse 18, without having to put in a relay, without having to wire in a toggle switch. I hope this helps some of you out and uh, check it out and see what we did. All right, so we are sitting in my 2006 Range Rover HSE. Uh, now, this is happening two weeks after I fixed the problem. The audio was messing up on the first video, so I'm going to have to go back and do this after the fact. So uh, this is going to be a reenactment. But essentially what will happen is you put the key in. Now, the way that this system works, there is a security module, an anti-theft module under the center console. There is an antenna that picks up the radio transmitter in the key. So when you put the key in, the antenna detects the key. It sends a signal to the steering column lock module. The steering column lock module will read whether or not the steering wheel is in the locked or apparently unlocked position and determine if it will allow you to turn the key. So essentially you put the key in it sends a radio signal to the theft module. The theft module says that is the correct key, sends a command to the steering column module, tells the steering column module to unlock. Once the steering column module unlocks, you'll hear a click. Once the steering column module unlocks, it then sends a 12 volt signal to the motor inside of the uh, key. And so actually I should be able to simulate this yeah, there you go. So this is what will happen if your steering column module fails. Um, it will detect the key. It will allow you to turn the key slightly and the key will hit the lock. And so many people think the ignition switch is bad. The ignition switch is not bad. Um, you will have power to the radio. You can turn the radio on. Um, you'll have like some weird, you'll be able to do like you, I don't even remember if your headlights will work now. Like a lot of things won't work. So you get limited power. Um, when the key is detected, what will happen is you go to turn it and then you've got full access. Now you're in accessory position. Now everything starts working. Now, once you have this problem, most people will have this problem and it will fail in the unlocked position. So the steering wheel um, lock module will go bad the steering wheel will be unlocked 
or locked. I don't know how it works, but most of these videos, it seems to be unlocked. And so um, you put the key in, the key won't turn, and now you've got a couple of options. Uh, you can pull Fuse 18. So if you pop this open, um, pull out Fuse 18, plug it back in. The other way to do it is to unplug the steering column module underneath this cover. Now, the first time you put the key in, the security module does not care what the steering column module is doing. So if you pull fuse 18, it resets everything. And the first time you put the key in, it will turn, everything will work. Pull the key out. The second time you put the key in, the steering column module is not working. The anti-theft module will not allow you to turn the key because it thinks that the steering column is locked or unlocked. But in other words, it knows that the car is not safe to drive because something may be wrong with the steering column. Um, it may be locked or unlocked. It doesn't know, so it prevents you from driving it. So now that we know that that is the problem, now we need to take the steering column out. And there's a lot of videos. I did not film how this happens. There's a lot of videos to remove the steering column. I'll link the one that I used in here because it was really good. Um, but there are three screws in here. These are T25 Torx. This is a T20 Torx. You're going to need long extensions. Pull these covers off. These two panels clip out. And then you will have access to the connector here. Sorry for my fingerprints in the camera. It happens. But um, disconnect all the electrical connectors. And then down here will be two eight millimeter bolts holding in pins. You pull the eight millimeter bolt out, pull the eight millimeter bolt out, get a pair of pliers, slide these two pins out, and the entire steering column will just lift out of the way. Now, um, you are gonna have to take the airbag out in order to drill um, and get access into the steering column module. Uh, there are some holes back here. You stick something in there. I actually drilled this out because I couldn't fit anything long enough in there. So I made these holes a little bit bigger. You put something long in there. There's a little spring that when you press it in, it will press the spring in and this will pop out. You do the same over here, press it in. There's a, there's a metal spring. Um, you press it in, this will pop out. And, uh, oh, sorry, hitting the camera. Uh, and then the airbag will come off. Uh, there is a 20, sorry, 19, 16, 16 millimeter bolt. Um, pull that off, the steering wheel will come off and then you have access to the, um, hardware inside the steering column module. There are six pins in there. You drill those six pins out and then you pull the cover. And now I will show you what that looks like because that's where we uh, will pick up. So uh, when you take this all apart, uh, if you carefully pry, there's a circuit board in here. If you carefully pry these two tabs out of the way, the circuit board lifts right off. Obviously this little solenoid pulls out. A lot of people are talking about this. Now, if you look down in this hole, in my particular case, what you will see is a metal bar, a brass bar right down in there. And this actually does not release the steering lock. I think some of the videos I've seen actually says this is the actuator. This is just a sensor. So what this does is this goes down in the hole and when the steering column is locked, it activates the sensor and tells the steering column module that the sensor, uh, the steering column is locked and it will not let you turn the key. When this is open, it tells you the steering column sensor is unlocked and it will allow you access to the key. So if the sensor is bad and it's not sending a signal, that's one thing, but in my particular case, it's correct. What I actually think is wrong is this motor. So um, there's a tab down here two tabs here and then one tab over there. When you pull this motor apart, now this is what it looks like. So as you can see, I've got, you know, a red and a black wire, which activate the motor and then three wires, which this is a sensor bank. You can kind of see the magnetic sensors right there. And this correlates to the open position. So when this is closed, if you pull this motor out, So now my steering column is locked. See, there's my brass bar. 
and I can no longer activate the steering column, if you rotate this around, now the steering column is unlocked and the bar is gone. So uh, I'm going to desolder this so that the motor doesn't work, put the motor back in here, which will keep this locked in the open position. Um, and then I'm gonna put it all back together and see what happens. If the problem is in fact this motor has burned out so it actually won't release the lock, then I'm wagering that my sensor is correct, my computer module is correct, I'm wagering everything else is correct, and other than deactivating the steering column lock, the Range Rover will work just fine. So when putting this motor back in, make sure that tab right here is nestled properly. Otherwise, the case won't go on and the sensor won't make good contact. So just couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it back on. Thought the wires were in the way, but uh, I had the motor upside down. So don't uh, spin that over. All right, so everything's back in. The steering column is no longer locked, but now I've got the traditional problem where if I unplug this connector, then I don't have the ability to um, start the car except for one time. So we're right back to the old problem where now the steering wheel is not locked, but I'm right back to the problem everyone else has where fuse 18, you pull fuse 18, you can start it one time. So what I have done is I've reasoned you can, this red yellow wire is a power feed, this blue wire, which is hard to see, is very, very, very small gauge wire, but this blue wire is the signal wire to tell the ignition switch to release the lock. So if you jumper those two wires, it releases the lock on your ignition switch. Um, the problem with that is if you permanently jumper those wires, then the ignition switch is released all the time and that's gonna be a draw on your battery. So what I have done is taken this blue wire here, I've soldered it in to this wire right here and I have run it down to, this is the light for the footwell. So the little light right here, um, I've got the power wire for the light. And so the logic being that a light bulb is going to draw maybe one and a half amps, give or take 12 volts. Um, so the only thing I'm not sure about is the lighting module, if it's going to see this extra load on the circuit and cause problems. But um, what it's going to do is every time the lights are on, so every time you open the door, and the lights are on, you now are gonna be able to start the vehicle. See, and even though my steering column is unplugged, now my lights are off. It's sending the key signal to the steering column module but my lights are off, so turn the lights on and start the car. Um, or, you know, open the door, close the door. Your lights are gonna stay on for 30 to 60 seconds, so you'll never really notice that this feature doesn't go there anymore. And then as the car turns off, it'll deactivate power to that ignition switch and it won't run down the battery. So that was the easiest way I figured I could do that without having to use any relays. All right, so debrief. Now that you've seen that video, um, I had to splice this together. I had a bunch of stuff filmed all together. The Obviously the footage of me fixing the Range Rover was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and then all of this I'm filming now after getting back from the beach and after driving around for a few weeks because the none of the audio was working properly. Um, but so debrief, just because now that I'm watching this again, it may not be 100% clear uh, that blue wire that I wired in, that blue wire with the yellow tracer was a wire that I just added to the system. So don't go cutting open the harness looking for that blue wire to splice in. Uh, that is a wire I 
added in. So go get some really thin wire, maybe some 18 gauge wire from the store. Um, take that blue, the, the solid blue wire coming out of the harness for the uh, steering column lock module. Uh, and then what I did was just uh, strip a little bit of the insulation. I did not cut that wire because I don't know what else is on that circuit. If you don't know how these circuits work, mess with as little as possible. So I just stripped the insulation back. I um, took a wire, wrapped it around it, and then soldered it on. That's very, very, very important. It needs to be soldered. I'll explain it to you in a second. Uh, I then ran that wire down through the steering column, um, zip tied it to some other wires to keep it out of the way. And then I ran that wire down into the kick panel under the, my foot. There's a little light under that kick panel. Um, when I popped that wire out, I ran it to the power feed on that. Same thing, I just stripped a little bit of the insulation, wrapped that wire that I added around it, soldered that into place. Now, the reason you do not want to just wrap it around or use a crimp connector or um, anything else like that, what I don't know, and you may know this, you may be smarter than me about this. I did not do this at my shop, I did this at my house, so I was very limited in the tools. I didn't have a good multimeter, so I basically was kind of fudging this a little bit. So I was not able to test um, the steering column, I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, but most of these European vehicles have a lighting control module. And those are very, very sensitive. They will actually detect the amount of resistance in the lights. And if they get a weird resistance, they can do some really weird things. What you don't want to do is have a poor connection here and then have it fry a body control module or an illumination module. That could be really, really expensive. And, and we're trying to avoid that. We do not want this to be any more expensive. So solder it, make sure you know how to solder it, wrap it good with high quality like 3M electric tape, and this will be a permanent fix. Now, um, I've driven this for a couple of weeks. I, only once or twice have we ever had trouble starting it, and that was all I had to do was basically uh, flip this button on, and then uh, it was fine. Uh, once you realized that it did not start with the light on, you just flip that on. Now, um, I hooked it up to the illumination module. That was the most sensible thing I could think of. This is a low voltage signal. Anything that you want to hook this up to, you can hook this up to. So you could literally hook this up to anything that will get power sometimes. Whenever you hook that blue wire up to something that gets power, you'll be able to start your car. Um, so it just, this was the most logical thing I could think of. Uh, but if you've got a better idea, let me know. I mean, anybody can think of something like this. That would be really cool. Now, um, interesting fact. So you saw when I took the steering column module apart, we've got that little plunger. That's the plunger that everybody's drilling into their column and adding oil to. That is a position sensor. That evidently tells the computer that the steering column is either locked or unlocked. Now, I did not test that sensor to see if it was working. I did not have the tools to do it. So, when I put the steering column back in my Range Rover, um, it basically still didn't work. So, even though the steering column was unlocked, it still would not give me access to start the car. So, either that position sensor is not working properly, or the, the sensor, you know, that wheel with the magnets, that sensor may not be working properly. I'm not 100% sure exactly how that circuit works. I'm not sure that um, my motor may or may not have been burnt out. I do know that when I put it all back together, when I would put the key in, the first problem I have was I would get a very faint clicking noise. So when this problem first happened, I would get a click, 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 click. So I was reasoning that the motor was burnt out, it was trying to release the steering column lock, it just wasn't able to do it. Now, after I did this, you saw how I bypassed it, I switched the motor around, I disconnected the motor, um, and now when I did it, you heard a very loud clicking. Click, 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 click. Uh, what I think that was, was that solenoid. I think that solenoid was detecting that the steering column lock was not on when it should have been. And so I think that clicking noise is the steering column lock going up, down, up, down, up, down. Basically, in case it was stuck, I think Range Rover 
engineered this in such a way that if it didn't see the steering wheel locked, I think that plunger is gonna go up, down, up, down, basically trying to clear it in case it gets stuck or jammed. Uh, that affects nothing, um, other than I think that means that my sensor was working, so evidently maybe something was burnt up in that wheel assembly in the motor. I don't really know. But um, apparently it has to sense that it's locked and it also has to sense that it is unlocked is my belief. Um, if anybody finds out a different way to bypass that, please let me know. I'd be really curious. Uh, I think there's a way to get in there and basically repair the steering columns without having to replace them. Um, but I just didn't have the time. We were getting ready to go to the beach and I didn't have all my tools to test it. So I came up with this little workaround. Um, so I hope it helps. If you don't have the steering wheel locked, so you don't have to pull the steering column out of your Land Rover if it's not locked. You only have to pull that out if you have the same problem I had where the steering wheel was completely locked and would not turn. If my steering wheel was not locked, if you can pull Fuse 18, start your Range Rover up and drive it around, good on you. You don't have to pull this off. That is a bunch of extra work that you do not have to go through. So I know I skipped a lot of steps. I'll link you to the videos on YouTube that I watch to help me get this far. Uh, and then yeah, bypass it, save yourself a couple grand and go have fun. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. We'll do a lot of you know, whatever videos. I got Land Rovers, I got Jaguars, I got Aston Martins, uh, I got all kinds of cars. And when they break, I'll do some videos like this and we'll see you next time.